Taylor here with Stomp USA. I asked our uh, good friend, fine trumpet player Javier Gonzalez to come in and talk a little bit about his experiences, not only in the music business, but to be honest, with Stomby gear. And so um, I'll ask a few questions mm -hmm. and then we'll just talk about the relationship we've developed over the last few yeah. years. So <clears throat> Javier, when did you first hear about Stomby gear? Uh, actually, I studied with John Fumo at Carl Arts, and he was using a, a, an Elite uh, a B flat, and I think he had a, a flugelhorn as well. Uh, but then I studied a little bit while he was out of town with Neil Diamond. <laughs> uh, uh, Howie Shear came in, and he was using this the first version of this horn, which is the VR1. Uh, and then he got the new one, and at that point, I couldn't afford one, but I've always wanted one. I tried it, and it just made everything just feel in my feeling of it really easy. So the VR2 that you tried was easier to play? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then, I know it's nice that you say you wanted to have one after that and you were trying to save some money and yeah. blah blah blah. And this well, and to, be, to be fair, you know, I, I did try everything I could. I went to Nam Show three times and I tried out everything they had there and they were all very good solid horns. I mean, there really wasn't a bad horn there. But knowing how the way I play and what I was trying to accomplish with one it being, it being a tournament player, I, I realized that owning a Bach, owning a Yamaha, and owning uh, a Courtois, they were all just too big. Even with the Bobby Shoe, it just felt like I wasn't getting enough out of the horn that I could have. Yeah. So does the, does the VR2 then feel tight? No, it, what's, what's great about it is the range that I, of, of volume that I give in this horn. I can play extremely soft without losing it, and I can play as loud as possible, and actually I'll give up before the horn does. <laughs> okay, and you said a moment ago that when you realized that this was a, a horn that allowed you to do what you wanted to do, mm -hmm. or trying to do as a treble player, I think is how you put it. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by that? What are you trying to do as a treble player? Well, <laughs> what I've come across being in LA, I mean, I've been here all my life. I've been coming here four years ago and trying to start a career. I've been here since day one of me being born. Um, and I've noticed that in order to make a living uh, as a freelance musician, I was I had to do classical, I had to do jazz, I had to do big band, I had to do lead trumpet, I had to do salsa, I had to do world music, and I was realizing that I was changing trumpets and changing mouthpieces to 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 accomplish what was the word uh, to uh, accommodate all those styles, and I sort of thought I found it with the Yamaha Z, which was the best of the, all the ones that I tried, and that one worked for a while until more was being demanded of me. And then it just started backing up on me, it felt too small, uh, even though I was used to using it for, at that point, eight years. <laughs> it started, started feeling small. And this thing, when I tried it, and I started using it for two years straight, uh, I haven't had any issues, and I'm playing really, really hard. Not that not I'm working real hard, I'm just working a lot now. Uh, whether it's a... <laughs> $50 gig or a couple of thousand dollar gig, it doesn't matter, I'm working a lot, thankfully. Uh, and this horn makes it so much easier for me. When you first got the VR2, mm -hmm. I remember when you came in, yeah. and you started to go to different gigs with different players in town, yeah. did you get any pushback for the fact that you weren't playing a, one, oh. of the, one of the you know, yes. accepted instruments in this town? You know, a few comments that I've gotten from a few people, it's like, when am I getting a real horn? <laughs> and it's, it's amazing because I've, I heard that multiple times in the first couple of months that I had it. And since they heard me playing it and playing it, I just they don't, I don't hear it at all anymore. And if, if they do say something about it, with that rehearsal or gig, they never say anything about it ever again. It's amazing how there was all this shit talking essentially. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And there's none now. I mean, now you have uh, uh, other musicians in LA, Bijan's using it, Walt's using it, and there's no negative co comments about their playing. You know, and again, I haven't got any, I mean, every once in a while I'll get somebody who will say something once in that rehearsal or gig and that's it. Yeah. And it's, I mean, the horns, the, the playing speaks for itself. You know, I, I mean, as long as it works and it sounds good, there's no negative things to say about it. You know? And of course, the, the, Trumpet doesn't play itself; it needs a pilot. So obviously, you have a lot to do. <laughs> well, with it. it's, it's a good thing having the, right, the proper tool for this for the trade. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you started out 
help me remember. So the VR2 was the first horn you bought of yes. ours, correct? Mm -hmm. And then did you get another horn first or did you come in for a mouthpiece at some point? I came in for a mouthpiece. I I, yeah, I just had the only horn I had first was this thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and after that, I, I didn't get a flugel horn until way, way later. But I did come in and I actually bought about three different mouthpieces for the B flat. And why did you get three different mouthpieces? Because I pushed you as a tough salesman? Actually, no. I had a sort of all around commercial mouthpiece, and then I had a, I needed a classical mouthpiece, and then I got one for high notes. Just, But actually, the one for high notes actually works for everything. <laughs> I, I've been noticing um, working uh, this week with uh, Dancing with Stars was uh, Disney Week, and I actually used one setup for the whole show. And that was the one that we just finished in December, the mouthpiece? Yes. So that's like a, if I remember, you're on like a three rim, right? Yeah, it's a, it's a three S. I made it, we made the cup a little smaller and stuff because you're playing extremes. Yeah. But you're able to play the whole gamut of the horn? I mean, we did a, a, a minute and a half version of Mary Poppins having all the meat and potatoes in one <laughs> minute and 28 second thing. And I used this mouthpiece and hearing back the recording, it doesn't sound like I'm using a small mouthpiece. It actually sounds extremely full. Okay, yeah. and how much do you attribute that? Obviously, I gotta say, 99% <laughs> of it is your skill. <laughs> well, I, I've noticed, actually from the very first month I've gotten from you, I had no issue going from a double C to a pedal C without over adjusting. You know, I can actually play smooth lyrical passages on this mouthpiece and then take that same phrase up to three octaves with the same sort of response and then come back down to the first octave that I started in without having to readjust. Mm -hmm. you know, and the biggest thing about this mouthpiece is that the low end is always there. Even though this is a real shallow mouthpiece, you can't tell it from the low end. I mean, granted, there is, if, if you can't compare it to a 1C. You know, you won't get that same sound, but it's pretty damn close. And that's what's impressive, what, what it really impresses me, mm -hmm. is that I, again, this whole gig, I mean, we had a 6.30 call <laughs> Monday morning, we were done at 7. PM. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say not 7 a.m. Right? <laughs> no, 7 p.m. So, I mean, and we literally just this setup, and that, that was it. You know, getting away from the equipment, because mm -hmm. guys will be interested, in a call like that, 6.30 a.m. till 7 p.m., how much of that time is spent uh, hurry up and wait? And how much are you guys actually working? Actually, on this particular gig, there's none of that. Okay. <laughs> there is no hurry up and wait. You get there from 6.30 a.m., everyone's on stage ready to play, and we're playing at 6, I mean, our call time was 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. to start working at 6.30. So we came in and did all the rejoice and bump bridge, which is going from commercial to commercial and segment to segment. We ran all that stuff. And the first note I had, our uh, first chart in there, the highest note in there was um, a high F. But it started on a high C. <laughs> okay. You know, so it's like, it was just, bam, here we go. And then after that, we did Beauty and the Beast, which is all mid to low range. <laughs> Okay. And on this mouthpiece. So it, there was me, I got there, did a great warm up, and then we went on for the rest of the day. Okay. And <laughs> yeah. you've, uh, you've been doing dancing with the stars off and on for a while. For a while, yeah. Um, in the beginning, were you apprehensive? Did you have nerves? Or oh, you, you, how could you, you not? Yeah. Well? I don't know. No, no, I got there and I was, uh, you get there, and again, I've, I've, done, this sh I've done other shows similar to I've done American Auto, I've done The Voice, um, but this is a whole different thing because here you're live the whole time. In the other situations, we pre-recorded everything. We got there, we recorded the stuff, and then we, you know, we would play live, but we weren't really heard in, in the in the TV. We were live in the house, but here, especially hearing back, uh, watching the videos afterwards, we're live. You hear, you, I was hearing myself breathing in the microphone in the commercials or, or the, the show. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 amazing, you know. So I mean, it was very nerve-wracking the first time, but. Thankfully, experience kicked in, and it was it was a breeze. Once the once the band leader Ray Chu counted it off, you know the the training just kicked in. It was easy. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And when you started out, I may get this wrong, so we're yeah. gonna do it again. Yeah. When you started out with Idol, was it two trumpets with you and Harry? Uh, it depended, actually. Uh, there were some times where it was just one trumpet. Yeah. So what in the beginning, do you For me, yeah, the, yeah. the first time, yeah. was it you and Harry Kim? Actually, no, the first time <laughs> I ever did a real American Idol session, because before I was just hired to be a, to do sidelining, because they wanted a younger looking horn section for the TV. Uh, and one day the producers or somebody higher up wanted a larger sounding horn section in the mix. So not warmed up, cold, <laughs> I had to come in 
and play this really, I forgot what piece it was, but it was some sort of Motown thing. It was, you know, it was high. Um, and, you know, I did a five minute warm up <laughs> and did it. And that's how I got my first gig essentially. And from then on, I was called almost on a regular basis. Yeah, and that was nerve wracking because that was like, oh, oh my God, nerves. You know, being in a situation where people here, here's where you make it or break it situation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you did some of those uh, gigs though with Harry Kim, correct? Yes, yes. And was that a good learning experience? Yeah, because I mean, at that point, I, I mean, there's always a certain etiquette that people should always have when you come into a situation when you have somebody who's had the years of experience where for me, and I'm pretty sure I wouldn't be the only one, just give him the first part. You know, it, whether he's the first one there or the last one there, he gets it just out of respect because he sounds so damn good. You know, and he's, there's, there's decades of, of, of hearing him sounding amazing. So, and yeah, just, he was one of my teachers, I and mean, even though he wasn't officially my teacher, just be able to sit next to him and hear what he does, hear his breathing, hear his phrasing, hear how he attacks a certain phrases, hear how he conducts the, or, or leads the group both by the horn and by speaking to them. We should articulate this here. Here's one uh, phrase that when you see a little cap on a note, it's a, it's a short, long note. And he, he calls it a f Harry Kim, short and fat. Yes. <laughs> I'm sure they appreciate you uh, re <laughs> no, revealing he, that to the world. He has no problems. He's like, it's, he's like, it's what it is, it's the truth. And he's always been an extremely humble and honest guy. But it hasn't been completely mm. uh, Fame and glory oh, no, with Stompy no. Gear. With Stompy Gear. Yeah, yeah. There have been some times where you've come in and we haven't found something right away. Yeah. I remember when you were looking for a sea trumpet, mm -hmm. it took a few of them. Yeah. You, you tried some here that were okay, mm -hmm. but you took them on the gig and it wasn't quite right. Yeah. And so. When I came in looking for a sea trumpet, I had a, an older, I guess it was a Z version, uh, Bobby Shoe version of the sea trumpet. It was a medium bore. Uh, Yamaha C trumpet and which which went well with my Bobby shoe at that point um, but I wasn't I, it wasn't being used for very long so now I had these opportunities to start using one I tried it with the with the, the Yamaha and it wasn't working uh, I did try other Yamahas but this it was still too different it wasn't most guys like to find a C trumpet that plays very similar if not exactly like the B flat so was it a, when, when you were saying because you had the VR2 for your B-flat. Mm -hmm. When you were playing the C trumpet and it wasn't working, what does that mean? It didn't feel right? It didn't have the right sound? It didn't have the right sound. It felt squirrely. We even got an alignment. We did an alignment on it. You have me out the alignment. We see if that worked. Mm -hmm. Because thankfully you weren't, you weren't pushing the horn. You were just pushing to fix mine. If you can make it work, make it work. You know. Um, and we tried everything we could with that horn with, with not much success. It made it a little better, but it, it still wasn't enough. And then I tried the Titan C trumpet, and that was too big for me. I mean, it was it's a, it's a large bore, and you know it's a C trumpet, but it just it felt so different from the VR2 B flat that it wasn't working. And then we found one VR2, and that one feels exactly like my B flat. It has a different sound, but it's not a it's not a better or worse sound. It's it's the right sound for the style I was working on. Well, it's a C trumpet. It's supposed to sound different. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. But it didn't feel different. It felt mm -hmm. the same. All the intervals were very similar, uh, and it, it wasn't much. I'd have to practice it a lot to make it feel right. 